Hello, I am here today and so excited with Michael Downey, the head instructor of Unique University at Unique Photo Camera Store here in Fairfield, New Jersey. He currently owns and operates Michael Downey Photography out of Somerville, New Jersey. He has photographed hundreds of moderate to high-end weddings throughout the Northeast. Michael also teaches during photo walks and workshops, which I've been on myself. His images can be seen at New Century Artist Art Gallery in the Chelsea section of Manhattan, and I'm so excited to have him here. How are you today, Michael? Fantastic. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thanks so much for being here. So My tell pleasure. me a little bit about your background in photography. I know you've been doing it for, for quite a while. Yeah, I, I actually picked up photography uh, way back in high school. Um, I was an architecture major in college, and I never stopped with the photography. Um, I actually had a whole career in uh, information technology, mm -hmm. uh, but even during that time, I stayed with the practice of photography. I found it a wonderful way to express myself. Uh, and then in 2001, that's when I made the career change to become a photographer full time. So from 2001 on, I've been doing photography. That's how I pay the mortgage. Um, I've always said that if, um, and I don't know who said this originally, I heard it was Confucius, but I've always said that if you pursue a career you're passionate about, you never work a day in your life. So I determined that I wanted to pursue travel, photography, and teaching. Uh, I worked with a wonderful business coach. We developed a, a career around that, and I've been thrilled ever since. Life occurs for me differently since doing that. Yes, great. I, I know that you're excellent at coaching um, no, and photography as well. So I want to ask you, you take your amazing photography skills and you take these photos with your smartphone that just my jaw drops every time. Um, we're connected in social media. I know you believe in that. So mm -hmm. I wanted you to talk to me a little bit about your smartphone photography that you use. Yeah, well, uh, photography, um, the way I like to say it is, um, it's not the violin, it's the violinist. So once you, once you um, get proficient at the skills that it takes to take a good photo and use it as a way of self-expression, um, the medium or the device that you use uh, can be pretty much anything. Anything that can take a nice photo uh, can be used to communicate uh, what I call that synchronistic moment in your life. And that's what I use my smartphone for. Uh, to document the synchronistic moments of my life. Absolutely. And um, I know that you use the principles of photography for your smartphone photography. So mm -hmm. can you talk to me a little bit about that? I know that we um, you know, did coaching together. We have gone on photo walks and mm -hmm. I use those photos for my business as well now. We'll talk about that soon. But yep. I wanted you to talk about those principles that are so important that anybody can learn and then just start taking pictures like a pro. So tell me about that. The principles right. of photography. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, are, you, are we talking about photography I'm itself? talking about can, like, okay, let me go back a little bit. Let's, yep. Can you tell me a little bit about composition and how you compose what's in the frame of your photographs? Right. Sure. There are several uh, compositional guidelines, but one of the basic ones is the one we're all taught, like even in third grade art class, it's the rule of thirds. And lots of smartphones, um, the native camera app, or even uh, the apps that you can buy um, aftermarket have the rule of thirds grids that you can implement. And the rule of thirds, uh, said very simply, uh, means to Put your point of interest somewhere other than that center square. Put it, uh, put it in one of the other quadrants. Use the quadrants so that you have a more interesting area outside of the center, giving the viewer an area to dance through and then land on the point of interest. Um, you can also use the junction points of the grid. And the grid just, just simply means it looks like it's a tic-tac-toe board right, right. for your field of view and use one of the other squares. So that's a very simple, very easy to follow guideline. Like I said, most of the um, smartphone applications, even the native camera applications in smartphones, allow you to even just uh, superimpose the grid on the viewfinder. 
Um, but there are other ways of seeing, other ways that you want to practice. One of the things I say is uh, uh, shoot from high, shoot from low. Don't just always shoot eye to eye. Don't shoot eye level every time. Get down low. That's mm -hmm. going to change the perspective. Get higher if you can. Be safe, but get higher if you can. That will change the perspective. And that uh, oftentimes has your images stand apart. Even though it's just a smartphone, your images will stand apart from the uh, rest. Um, there are others. Uh, use something in your foreground to frame your subject. That uh, directs the viewer where to look. It also can share what the environment was like when you took the picture. Um, maybe you could uh, shift the orientation. Sometimes people just take pictures in the orientation that the camera is uh, made in. But no, go ahead and turn it. Do some landscape shots. Sh show some long horizontals. Don't just shoot vertical. Right. That could change how things look. Um, there, there, there are some others like um, the elements of design. And one of the ways you can really enhance your composition is to practice shooting the elements of design as abstracts. Um, the six I teach are lines, shapes, forms, texture, pattern, and color. And just shooting for those things, just shooting for those things alone as abstracts will have you see differently when you go to photograph something that uh, where that's not the subject, but it can enhance how your subject looks. So practicing elements of design is a great way to uh, improve how your images look, even on a smartphone. Yes, absolutely. And I know you said that you like to document you know, your life and where you are and what you do. And I know that you're a runner. Yes. Is that so? So uh, mm -hmm. I know you were surprised I was going to mention this, but I know that you, you share some photos along your runs and you're always telling your students to, to practice and just take pictures and just keep shooting and you'll get better. So you always take pictures like when you're running. You run often by a bridge, I know. Is that, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, there, I, uh, there, there are wonderful places. For, for, so first, uh, let's be clear. Sure. Um, I'm running for my head. I'm not a fast runner. I take my time. Okay. I run in a slow pace. So part of that therapeutic process of running for me has me take pictures along the way. If I see something that interests me, I will stop and take the picture. And yes, uh, bridges fascinate me. Um, uh, I studied architecture. So bridges, buildings, whether old or new, I find that fascinating subject matter. So yeah, even on my runs, I'll stop and take pictures of things that uh, will bring me back to that moment or even take me back even further when that's the sort of thing that I uh, studied and uh, uh, I, I love getting into the thought process of uh, any type of creativity. It doesn't have to be a painting. It doesn't have to be a photograph. But the creative process that it took uh, the engineer or the architect to create, um, uh, I'm always interested in. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I know that we, when we were on one of our photo excursions, um, we, you had introduced me to some pro photo apps that you can use and we'll talk about those but um, you introduced me to a particular app called Photographers Ephemeris because yes. you said that there is really just a certain time of day that's the sweet spot to shoot in the morning and night and and you'll know if you want to take a picture of like a structure or some landscape what the best time of day would be with this app so can you tell me a little bit about that? Right. So photography, it, it, when you consider photography literally means recording the light, well then light becomes paramount and the direction the light's coming from, the color the light's going to be, how much light there is, all that becomes very important to a photographer. Now sometimes you don't have a choice, you're taking the picture and the light is what the light is. But if you're planning a photo session, then plan it around how you can manage the light. If it's something outside and your the sun is your um, source of light, well then use something like the photographer's ephemeris to see what direction the light's going to be coming from, what color will the light be that time of day, and maybe you can plan your day and where you're going to be to take that picture, uh, given you know how the light's going to be managed in that moment. Sure, and and I the real the reason that I I mentioned this app um, is for maybe businesses who have a need to take photos outside right. where 
they need to take physical structures. Maybe they're in real estate. Maybe they want to take a, a photo of their establishment. Right. Um, it's very, very important to get the lighting the right time of day and not too like at noon where it's high up in the sky. But I want to ask you about what if it's cloudy? Yeah, well, uh, Ansel Adams would say, wait another day if you don't want clouds in your shot. That, that, that's another thing. Uh, photography has you slow down. It has you take your time. And sometimes it's better to wait until the light's better. Um, I, again, it depends on the statement you're making, what you're trying to communicate, because I don't let cloudy days stop me all the time. Sometimes a cloudy day is going to provide much nicer light, depending on what I'm taking a picture of. The whole sky becomes my light source. If the light is large, the whole sky, well, then the light's going to be a lot softer. If the light is small, the sun, mm -hmm. well, then the light's going to be harder. So depending on what I'm trying to communicate, if I want to communicate something with the soft light, cloudy days are my friend. Right. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's great that you plan and you take a look and you're not afraid to shoot even if there is a cloudy situation or you just want to capture a moment so but it's really being in charge of you know the the you know situation that you're in right right exactly taking yeah. control absolutely absolutely so i want to ask you michael about your advice for business owners who might want to take some photographs not outside but behind the scenes and at the team of the team, I know at Unique Photo, you guys are always shooting the, the people behind the scenes, especially yeah. your staff. So, so right. tell me a little bit about what your advice would be to a business that wants to take stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, uh, well, I say no matter what business you're in, uh, both photography and video can communicate who you are for your community, what your, whether it's a service or product, who you are. So document everything. Document everything photographically. If videos don't intimidate you, document things with videos. That gives your prospects an insight as to who you are and what you're up to, what you're looking to provide for the community. So um, learn how to use a camera that's going to show them in the best light. You know, it's one of the things we pride ourselves at uh, Unique Photo, that we have a wonderful university. That even if you know nothing about photography, we can get you up to speed and have you document the behind the scenes, the employees. You know, like I said, whether you're providing a product, here's the production, um, here's the end product. And doing that and doing it on, on a level that uh, your common customers can relate to makes a huge, huge difference. You know, that's that's what building the business relationship really is all about. Absolutely. And I know that in social media, it's all about sharing photos immediately to mm -hmm. be very timely, uh, especially if something is going on right now. You can't wait to bring it on your computer to process it and then put it back. So right. tell me about what the benefits are to using a smartphone as opposed to a DSLR. Well, um, I use both of them in conjunction. Yes. So benefits. Um, the benefit of, of the smartphone is it's lightweight, and you, you know, we can use that pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the smartphone has a huge advantage in that um, all of them have, you know, all of today's smartphones have a really good camera. Um, granted, you can't change lenses and that sort of thing, but most of the time you can get mm -hmm. the images that you want. You can get the images that you need. Mm -hmm with a smartphone if you want to communicate something and there's an urgency to it uh, you know if you look at the um, you know the way I look at photographs are there are the photographs that are important and urgent to share there are the photographs that are important but not urgent to share there are there photographs that are urgent to share but not important and then there are the not urgent and not important so smartphones really lend themselves powerfully to those that are urgent to share but not important that's where it really thrives because you know oh it doesn't have to be perfect but it communicates whatever statement we're looking to right, make right. use your smartphone then but if it's important and urgent well then use a DSLR that has some sort of Wi-Fi you can send the picture right over to the smartphone and use it in conjunction with your camera to uh, communicate that important picture urgently Yes, and, and I understand that there are some DSLRs with this Wi-Fi capability. Matt Sweetwood yep. we, and I talked about that, the 4K, um, we talked mm -hmm. about that too. But yep. I want to understand and, and have you share what the benefits 
of, of having a DSLR are and what the cons of only having a smartphone might be for a business. Yeah, again, if the, if the, if the photograph is important, yeah. you want to have wonderful contrast. You want to have really accurate color. You want to make sure you can vary your depth of field. I want to show this but not that. Well, then the DSLR is going to shine because you can manage all that and manage them easily. The smartphone is not as easy to manage the aperture, certainly, certainly with native apps. And um, sometimes that's important. I want to show you just this product, just this product amongst the other products that I have. Well, then I want a very shallow depth of field. That's going to be trickier to achieve on a smartphone. Mm -hmm. But on, a, um, on an SLR, you can manage your aperture. You can manage the depth of field and achieve what you need to achieve there. Same thing with white balance. Sometimes your um, smartphone doesn't get the proper colors. Well, if you have a DSLR, you can manage the colors, whether it be with presets or uh, predetermining the color temperature you're shooting in and have the colors be accurate. And sometimes that is important. You don't want to show a product, uh, even if you can show it immediately, if the colors aren't right when the color is important. So um, uh, that's where uh, an SLR uh, with Wi-Fi capabilities, or there are cards now you can get with Wi-Fi capabilities that allow you to transmit the photograph immediately. Um, that might be a better way to go, again, if they're important and they're urgent. Okay, so, so if it's pretty much, if it's a product shot where you need to really highlight the product or something where you need to show some depth of field right. um, where the subject might be in a particular area of the, of the photograph, then you might need a DSLR or could you hire a professional photographer for that? Well, as a professional photographer, I'm going to say that's always an option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never want to discount hiring a professional photographer. That's going to get you the best results by far. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, 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 if it's important and not urgent, or if, if it's important and urgent and you're communicating that to your professional photographer, that is always a really good option. Sure. That, that was interesting because you said if it's important but not urgent, if it's urgent but not important. That's like a matrix. That it, well, it is. It's, it, you know, uh, I read uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Okay. And constantly thinking about that. I mean, not just about what we're talking about, about anything that you're taking on in life. It has you be the most effective. Sure. Is it, you know, is it important and urgent or is it important but not urgent? Just consider right. it, you know, the four quadrants of your intention. And yeah. then you can see what's the best approach to take. That's brilliant. So let me ask you. What are your favorite camera apps that on your phone you just mm -hmm. can't do without? Mm -hmm. Snapseed by far. I okay. love Snapseed. It allows me to manage and manipulate my pictures almost any way that I want to manage them. Really? Oh, yeah. I love Snapseed. Um, and I do send a lot of pictures from my SLR to my smartphone just to do uh, color correction and editing or even just manipulation. It's a great application for that. Um, as you mentioned, the Photographer's Ephemeris is right there next to it because lots of times I'm outdoors and knowing the weather is not enough. Mm -hmm. So I want to know uh, which way is the sun rising, which way is the sun setting, which direction is the moon going to be coming up from, and which way is it setting, and what times are these happening. And with that app, not only do I get a, uh, a map, but I can also get a, um, a um, satellite view of how that's going to look at the particular time I'm looking to do the shoot. So that's probably a close second. Um, and as far as must-haves, that's probably it. Those two give me everything I need, but you know, there are lots of them that I play with. There are lots of uh, uh, smartphone uh, apps that I play with that uh, you know, I, I may mess with every now and again, and then I'm good. Um, I like the way most smartphones manage the images after capture. Uh, I do use Dropbox for my phone and my um, SLR images just to store. Okay. Um, I have I have the Dropbox app on my smartphone, so every picture I take with my smartphone is uh, backed up, so it's off my phone. If something should happen to my phone, I still have the image. So uh, th those are probably by far my favorites for photography. Excellent, excellent. And how? How much do people need to, to learn before they can start shooting some photos with their smartphone? Or can they just go out there and start? I say go out there and start. You know, um, the fact is, uh, 
what I see more often than not are people studying too much. You know, if, if, if I were teaching you how to drive, right. you know, there's one thing about getting the practicality of driving, you know, this is what you do when you approach a stop sign, all that. But you don't become a good driver until you get behind the wheel. So the same thing applies to photography, whether it be with your smartphone or any other type of phone. Practice each little bit that you learn, and then you'll find in no time you're better. See, the beauty of it is sm most of us have our smartphones all the time. So we could practice our uh, smartphone to photography, uh, oftentimes while some waiting for you know something else that's going to happen or about to happen. And, and most of the time, the pictures that we take with our smartphone, they're not a matter of life and death. So if it didn't turn out, it's not a big deal. Right, and right. get immediate gratification, oh, that didn't work, let me try it again. Mm -hmm. So I say uh, rock on, even if you don't know anything, if you know how to press the button to take a picture, you know enough to get started. That's great. And um, let me ask you about your social media because I know that we're connected and I, I love what you share. You share it immediately. You share a lot of stuff about your personal life too, which, is, which makes you very human. Mm -hmm. and, and people really love that beyond just the business sharing stuff about their their business and what they've got going on mm -hmm. but to make themselves a real person with real issues and and we right. love that so right. tell me a little bit about your social media use what you what you do yeah that's uh and, and you know i know there's two sides of the coin for that but my approach has always been listen um if you hire me as your photographer what you're different getting uniquely is michael downey you know, and that's part of what sets me apart from Joe Schmuckatelli, who also does photography. Joe so, who? <laughs> Joe Schmuckatelli, you know, that, a fictional <laughs> character. My point is, you know, lots of people build their photography, build their photography, and they separate it from themselves so much mm -hmm. that the people don't know, well, what am I getting if I hire Joe Schmuckatelli? You know, can anyone do this? And uh, the way I like to present it is, well, you're getting Michael Downey, and here's who I am, here's what I'm into. And this is what I can provide. Right. And no, I'm not for everyone, but for those who I am good for, I'm going to provide a really good product, a really good service. So um, I should, I, you know, I don't have distinctions. I do have a Michael Downey Photography Facebook page, mm -hmm. but I'm happy to friend you on Michael Downey's personal page as well. Um, on my Instagram, I don't have anything separate. It's just me, Photo Wayfair. And I, yes, in my Instagram, I share the business aspects of my photography as well as the personal aspects of my life so again you get a sense of who I am and what I'm up to um, you know if there's something I don't want you to know about you just won't see it okay. and I'm open to sharing uh, practically anything else so um, what I do share uh, I think gives people an insight as to who I am and what they're gonna get if they hired me whether it be to teach or provide photographic services and products that's fantastic. And, and I just want to let you know, Michael, that you not only made me a shutterbug and, and a, a photography well, enthusiast, great. but you really helped me to be a better marketer because I can always now capture stuff with my smartphone. If I may not have my DSLR handy and I'm not afraid to use this, I have photographers ephemer ephemeris. Yes. I have um, pro, top pro, no, pro camera. Okay. Yeah, so I use some pro uh, camera apps so I can adjust my white balance. Awesome. And my, yeah, and myself. So it really, really does help getting a basic understanding of photography and learning from the pros. So, and behind me, I, when I was doing the interview with Matt Sweetwood, um, mm -hmm. he said, he's like, nice rule of thirds. Like he's looking here and he's seeing, you know, what's behind me. So I, everything <laughs> here is like what you see in the frame. Like I know before I do this, Skype interview with you and I set up my whole setup my lights I have two big lights in my studio because I know that the lights not enough and right. I know um, You know what I want in my shot and I know right. that I want Oops, it's on the other side. I Know I want my photo that I took with Mike Downey That was oh, my first wonderful. photo <laughs> See that? And if you also look on my website the Sun that, that picture Yes so that was the, what was that called? Sun, Sunset, Sunset or Manhattan from Brooklyn yes. Park. That's the one. So, and I was taking a lot of photos behind the scenes of you and all that stuff. So 
it was great and it changed my life and it doesn't just have to be about photography but you can definitely use photography for your business and if you don't have a DSLR handy I recommend that you learn the the basics of photography even if you just have a smartphone it's gonna right. make you a better photographer and a better business person so right. Michael I want to ask you do you have any um, projects coming up on the plate or is there any, anything else that you want to share with our listeners today? well we're doing uh, on July 19th we're doing the two rivers five bridges tour that's where we go out on we charter a ferry and we go up the Hudson River we sail up and under George Washington Bridge come back down take pictures of the uh, Freedom Tower from the water Statue of Liberty. Then we go up the East River. We get the Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge, Williamsburg Bridge. We go back down. We get pictures of the uh, Barron Zero Narrows. So that's a really great time. Again, that's on uh, July 19th. I'm also doing a tour uh, through Longwood Gardens. We're doing macro photography through Longwood Gardens. And then we're hanging out because that evening they have fireworks. So we're doing fireworks. Uh, I can't promise this this year. But last year, we were fortunate enough to have a, um, a lightning storm come through as they did the fireworks show. So we got pictures of uh, the beautiful fountains they have at the gardens, as well as the fireworks they were firing. And God lended a hand and put lightning through the back <laughs> of our shot. So, wow, that must have been amazing. I, I can't promise the lightning, but we do have a great time with those, too. It's really a blast. Yes, it's, it's always exciting on, on Michael Downey Photo Excursions. <laughs> um, we, we just did uh, together your fire painting the other night. That's right. That was a good time. Did Expo? Yeah. So, so what did I do? I, my, my husband was taking some photographs with the DSLR. No room for me. So I was on the floor with a nice tripod. The floor bracing my camera and taking Instagram video of you. So yeah. it works out so nice. And I love the video. That was a great video. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks. You got you to gotta use the tools that you have. You can't be That's fancy. Right. You know, That's you, right. You've got to use what you've got because... It's, it's not the violin, it's the violinist. It's the violinist. Great <laughs> right. job. And how can people reach out to you? Photo Wayfarer on uh, Twitter and... Yep. My okay. social ID is Photo Wayfarer. P-H-O-T-O-W-A-Y... F A R E R, and that's whether it's Twitter, Flickr, uh, Instagram, 500px, Tumblr, all those use the same ID. Um, and then my meetup group is uh, Mad Photo Excursions, or you can just look up Michael Downey Photography. It points you right there. That's great. You're the man. Thank all you right. so much, Michael. Thank it's you. Great to I, see appreciate, you. I appreciate it. Love you, Thank Vicky. you. All right. Love you.